Hi, my name is Maylin Wright, and I'm representing Neosho FFA chapter, and I'm going to be giving the Missouri Quarter Horse Association speech. I would like to take you back to the fall of 2016 and meet my mayor named Shasta. Now Shasta wasn't your typical two-year-old quarter horse. She was rescued from a ranch in Missouri and was in rough shape when we first met. She had been malnourished and lacked the proper training to be a competitive horse for my future. I was quickly turned away from Shasta at first, but my mom was persistent that I give this horse a try. Throughout that next year, I really learned what it meant to be a horse trainer. Shasta has taught me the importance of a relationship with your horse. Shasta has also taught me that if you set your mind to something, anything is possible. Shasta has also taught me humility. Throughout these next few minutes, I would like to share with you the story of how Shasta, my two-year-old mayor, has impacted my life. A horse doesn't care how much you know until he knows how much you care. I think this quote from Pat Crowley rings true, especially with Shasta being a rescue horse. Most horses that come from rescue ranches have been mistreated and neglected. With that said, it takes extra love, time, and patience to build a healthy relationship with that horse. This was especially true with Shasta the first time I rode her bareback and not in a fenced in arena. And this particular experience was not pleasant for anyone. The wind on this particular day was quite strong. And as I was riding her, getting ready to put her back into the pasture, the wind swung the gate onto her rear. And before I knew it, I was on the ground and Shasta had ran off. From that day forward, I knew that training her was not going to be an easy task and that I had to gain her trust. Building a relationship is not an easy task, especially when you don't speak the same language. Trust is the foundation for every relationship, and without trust, that relationship will fall apart. I have also learned that through love and dedication, anything you set your mind to can be achieved. Looking back to the first few days or even the following weeks that I had first met Shasta, I would have sold her to anyone that had money to give. I was tired, frustrated, angry, and a mix of other emotions as I tried my hardest to get her to respond to me. I was at my wit's end and I was ready to give up. That's when my 4-H horse leader, Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly, shared some encouraging words with me. She said, soon, all of this hard work will be worth it and you will reap the benefits of your labor. I decided that day that I was not going to let a two-year-old horse get the best of me. For myself, it was a mental game. I knew what I had to do, but I lacked the confidence to do it. And if I knew, and I knew, that if things were going to work out between me and Shasta, then I had to step up my game. So I started spending more time with her, which eventually led her to understanding what she was supposed to do. Finally, by the summer of 2000, 2017, we were finally in sync with each other, and I had regained my love and joy for horses, especially Shasta. Shasta has taught me the true value of dedication, and although I wanted to give up many different times, I was able to persevere and stay focused with Shasta, and now it was time to put all of our hard work to the test. The Newton County Fair had finally arrived in July. Shasta and I had put in so much blood sweat and tears, and we were, we were finally ready to compete. It was my first year competing at the Newton County Fair with a different horse than the previous year. Last year, I had won Bruiser High Point with my old horse, Duke, and I was hoping to defend my title as reigning champion, and my goal at the end of the fair was to come out on top. However, that quickly changed as I entered the arena for the first event. Shasta was unfamiliar with the arena and proceeded not to follow any of my commands that I was giving her. I tried my best to stay calm, but Shasta kept on having a bad performance, having a bad attitude and not giving a good performance. I rode out of that arena with my head hung low and frustration on my mind because I knew that we could have done better than what we did. And as the week went on, I started to realize that I was not going to win High Point Award or even 
place in any event. This concept was very hard for me to accept since I had done so well the previous year. I was hoping to have the same outcome or to do even better. I start, I, for those next couple of days, I had a bad attitude and I did not treat Shasta very well. Others could see that I was not being myself, so my mom had a long talk with me. We talked about how I may not always come out on top, but if I wanted to achieve my goals, then I would have to work even harder throughout that next year. After our good conversation, I decided that I needed to have a better, a better attitude and start to treat Shasta with the respect like she deserved. Now looking back to that week, the lesson that I learned most was humility. You have to stay humble and understand that things aren't gonna always go as planned. And if you lose, that does not mean you're a failure. It just means you have to try harder next time. Looking back to the beginning of Shasta and I's relationship, I would have done anything for my mom to let me get a new horse. However, if you were to ask me today about, about selling Shasta, my response to you would be, there isn't enough money in the world to buy her. That's the kind of impact that horses can have on you. An impact full of memories and lessons learned, like dedication and humility. An impact full of memory of tears and bruises, literally. An impact that can last a lifetime. I think this quote from a Equestrian Code sums up the relationship that I have with Shasta. If you gain the trust of a horse, you have gained a friend for life.